Hello, my name is Hakon and welcome back to my channel and something a little bit different again today. So, um, this is actually tied in a little bit with my other video series on writing a fantasy game book because I was starting to write something and I came across a little dilemma. In the introduction to the book, in the beginning, the, uh, the uh, exposition as it were, there is a mention of a rowing boat and of the sound that the oar makes as it moves against the top part of the boat on which the oar rests. I'm not talking about the oar locks, I'm talking about that piece of wood that you get all along the side, top, top side of a boat um, where you rest your oars. In English, the only word that seems to be used for this regardless of what kind of boat it is, is gunnel. Um, and that word is derived from the word gun. And in a fantasy setting, particularly, the a world that does where guns do not exist, where the concept of a gun does not exist, that felt quite jarring to me. I did not want to use that word. I wanted to find out what else can I call it? Are there any other words that can be used for it? What was it called before guns? And I did some googling first of all and initially it didn't seem like any other words were used. It doesn't matter if it's a canoe or if it's a rowing boat, people call it gunnel and they don't think any more of it probably as well. But since I'm so fascinated by etymology, and I see the word gun in there, immediately I think of a gun. And, and of course, that association is something I do not want to give with the language I use in the book. So, I had to go on a quest to find out what was a gunnel called in English before there were guns. And uh, this is actually not an easy question right away, because the thing is that the word gun existed before guns. This may come as a surprise to some of you, but the word gun is associated with, uh, it can both be used of the projectile that you send out with a trebuchet, uh, a sort of a siege engine that is used to break down walls of uh, fortifications. Um, it can also be used, or it was also used of crossbows as well. Uh, at some point. So gun existed before guns and when firearms came along they adopted, the word gun was adopted for their use because of the association with crossbows and trebuchet. So uh, which means that the word gun and potentially gunnel are quite old. Certainly, it goes back to Middle English. So we're talking the, uh, the early part of uh, sort of your twelve know, hundreds and that sort of thing, that kind of kind of area, um, which means that it may not be as anachronistic as I initially thought. But still, I do not like that word because if people don't know that history of the word gun, they might still associate it with firearms. And uh, and so I thought it still had to be called something before that. And um, and I asked the question on Quora, uh, which is, if you don't know, it's a website where, you, where you're supposed to ask interesting questions and where you're supposed to get knowledgeable answers by people who actually know what they're talking about. Unfortunately, it does not always work that way, but um, sometimes it does. And even though none of the answers I got were actually correct, um, they got me thinking in the right direction, I think, because one person talked about a strake, uh, and a strake uh, is the name for the sideboards, the boards that make up the side of a boat. And of course, you said he said he suggested top strake, which would be the top board, but that is the board on which the gunnel rests. Um, so still not quite, but it got me thinking in the right direction because that make, calling that the top strake makes sense. Um, and but let's also look at the word whale for a moment in gunnel. 
Um, whale, of course, in this case, doesn't have anything to do with, with sea creatures as a whale. <laughs> um, but it's um, the same word as welt, for instance. Um, and, um, and of course, in Middle English, the, the gun, gunwale would have been gonnewale. Um, gunwale, gunwelt, I suppose you could say, if you wanted to modernize it. Um, and a welt, of course, something that sticks out from a surface, and it's meant to strengthen it as well. Um, welt is a modern English word as well. It's used for a method of um, connecting soles to uppers of shoes. So there's a welt, uh, a welted sole. Um, and on a welted sole, it's almost like a sort of get a kind of a thing sticking out, like like you would the the gunnel on a boat would be. Um, and also, you on a bigger ship, you have different whales as well, or welts. Um, on a sailing ship, you might have a mid a mid welt, a middle. That's actually uh, the word middle could actually literally also mean mid whale. Uh, um, the part of this in the middle that sticks out to protect the side of the boat, also when you go up against another one, and uh, it strengthens the whole construction. Um, so yes, who do you have that that word welt is um, is is quite an old one, um, and but gun that that still is my problem. So I was thinking along the terms of top welt might make sense. Uh, if you have a mid welt, you would have a top welt. And which means if you have a middle, you have a topple. And that led me on to another interesting thing because the word topple means to either to overthrow, to push something over, um, or it means to 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 fall over by on your own accord as well. But originally it would have been a uh, a transitive verb meaning to push something over. And I thought, aha, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because topple, if you imagine that you create a verb based on a topple of a boat. So if it's called, let's imagine for a moment that it is called a topple, or it used to be called a topple before it was called a gunnel, a top waller, top welt, um, then it would be very easy to imagine a verb where pushing something over the topple of a boat would be easily turned into a verb to topple, which of course can be transferred to other kinds of pushing something over. Uh, and then I looked in the dictionary and it says that the LE ending in topple is, a, the word topple is made out of the word top and an LE ending which shows that it's a frequentative. And what is a frequentative? Yes, it is a word that uh, indicates a kind of repeated action. And I thought to myself, that does not make sense at all. I mean, look at it. So you have other words that are frequentatives. In English, you make a frequentative by adding an ER or an LE ending to a, usually to a another verb to indicate a repeated action. Now, let's show you some examples now. I'll tell you some examples. I've got a list here. So we got blab uh, turns into the frequentative blabber. You've got bob turns into the frequentative bubble. Uh, a more interesting one because of the word change or the vowel change is climb turns into clamber. Uh, crack turns into crackle. Spit turns into spatter. Um, ring turns into wrangle. Um, and nest, nestle. Um, and then all of these, as you can tell, the two words the normal one and the frequentative have a very, very similar meaning, extremely similar meaning. It's just that the one with the LE or ER ending shows a kind of a repeated action or something that happens over time, several times, a slightly more sort of undefined uh, number of times. But top doesn't have anything to do with pushing or falling or anything like that. And yet, in the dictionary, without anyone questioning it until now, it's listed as a frequentative that turns into topple. And that doesn't make any sense at all to me. 
uh, of course, it is quite common that dictionaries are wrong. This is something that you don't usually spot unless you are very good at spotting these kinds of things. Um, but the thing is that it's not, it's quite an innocuous little word, isn't it? Topple. People wouldn't think any more of it. Somebody at one point when they made dictionaries decided that, yeah, that makes sense. It's a frequentative of top, topple. Yeah, let's go with that one. And everyone since copied that. And it does not make any sense. The thing is, if there are words ending in L-E, I mean verbs, that don't have anything to do with frequentatives. And I'll give you some examples of those as well. Um, there is um, juggle, fiddle, possibly cradle and rattle, although those might actually be frequentatives as well, but it's not obvious exactly how they came about. Um, and the thing is that just because most words or most verbs that end in le are frequentatives doesn't mean that all of them are. Um, another one, of course, uh, that doesn't, uh, well, it means in it's in the same sound, not L-E or E-L, depending on what comes first. So there is a word channel. Channel can mean more than one thing. It can also be, and are we going back to ships again now? A channel can also be written like this. Uh, it's pronounced channel, but it means something else. It's the, very related to gunnel now, it is the part of a sailing ship where you have the rope attachments. Um... So it's all, it's on top of the, well, I suppose on the gunwale of a, of a sailing ship as well. Um, so again, we have the welt. It's a chain welt. Um, and channel and gunwale. These are ending in EL. Um, so I thought it makes a lot more sense for topple to be derived from topple from top welt from the part of a boat that you can push something overboard and pushing something overboard on a boat is something that you do a lot it is i mean when you want something to go into the water like a fish trap you topple it into the water um when you want to you have got another boat next to you and you are giving them something that you have a part of your cargo, you topple it over into the other boat. That's not the word you usually would use necessarily, but it is the same kind of action that toppling is. It's pushing something over. And um, then it occurred to me, and I think this is the smoking gun, as it were, or the smoking top, perhaps, um, because we don't want the guns. That's that's what I'm getting away from. It's the smoking gun, or it's the smoking, it's the smoking topple of a boat. Is that the word for topple in uh, in in, te in pushing something over in Norwegian is valta? Yes, that's right. It is cognate with welt, which means which connects the word topple with the Norwegian word, it makes sense because they could both be related as well. So there's now two smoking guns, as it were, for my case, that topple is indeed the top of a boat, and it is what turned into the verb topple, and also it is the word I'm going to go with when I'm describing the top, the gunwale of a rowing boat in a fantasy setting. Um, after I decided to go with topple, by the way, um, that's topple, not topple, um, I had a look online and I see that some other people have been thinking along the same lines because I found some articles, uh, even some scholarly ones, about a Viking ship uh, and about uh, ancient Mycenaean triremes as well. Uh, where they had used the word topple about what we today call the gunwale. And even though there weren't that many examples of its use, it shows that there were others like me who thought that the association with guns was wrong and they looked for an alternative term to use and what made sense to them is what made sense to me is the topple. And of course, an English user who knows what the gunwale is, and if they see the word topple in the context 
the or is making a noise against the tuple, they will know instantly what it means, which means that it doesn't matter if you haven't heard it before. It is the word that works, and, and this is one of the, the most important things, I think, that defines a word that is correct in a descriptive sense of, of uh, when I mean correct, because people go on about how people are pronouncing things wrong, or writing things wrong. But if when you write something wrong or pronounce something wrong, or they use the wrong word, or you make up your own word uh, because you don't know the right one, and somebody still understands right away, unambiguously, what you mean, then you could argue in the descriptive sense that that is correct. Because the only purpose of language, usually, in everyday use is to communicate and if that communication works without misunderstanding then you have used the language correctly this is the purpose of language and the purpose of grammar is to communicate precisely so most likely in my book i will use topple as the word for the top of the boat uh, I was also thinking for a moment whether I should uh, use the local word, I mean the word in the language of the people that are featured in the book, um, and I don't have the word for it yet, but I have made a language which I've talked about in other videos, um, and I could have done that, but then I still would have to perhaps, well it would have been obvious from the context, but I could have described what I meant by it as well of course, but it would be more elegant and easier just to use a single word in the context that is immediately obvious what it means and topple seems to have both some kind of historical use that isn't documented so much um, and that is because most of the documentation from Middle English and before most references would be to warships um, common vessels that people just use for everyday use that that's not interesting to the people who left documentation in those days because there weren't people just writing diaries or uh, novels or anything like that. Novels weren't invented. Um, and of course, for, for English, uh, most of the linguistic tradition at the time would have been oral as well. Uh, so what you got in writing were official documents. So you might have a king commissioning a new warship and the word gunnel would be the only one that is relevant. So, yeah. So limited doc documents, limited uh, a limited corpus of written English that actually relates to everyday use and common terms that aren't important in an administrative sense. So, therefore, I'm going to use the word topple. Simple as that. Well... A little bit of a spiel there. Anyway, uh, I hope that was interesting to you. I certainly found it quite interesting to go on a quest for a word to use instead of gunnel. And I think I found my perfect solution. And I, on the way, I found this interesting connection with the word topple, which um, the dictionaries haven't picked up on yet. Anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Bye bye.